Hello, my name is Adam Blatch. I'm an Australian psychologist and I provide training to workplaces in trauma awareness, trauma prevention and frontline trauma treatment, as well as psychological safety at work. Let's start with a, what a psychologically safe workplace is. It's one in which management staff are aware of the psychological risks for their staff. They have protocols and policies in place to protect psychological safety, and they know how to recognize the signs when staff are not coping. In this video, I want to outline three of the really big risk factors, particularly for frontline staff who are working with distressed clients. These are burnout, compassion fatigue, and vicarious trauma. So let's start with burnout. Burnout can be simply defined as a staff member's workload overwhelming their psychological and physical resources. This can lead to stress, anxiety, depression, loss of pleasure, and low motivation. Compassion fatigue, on the other hand, is a little bit different. You can think of it as emotional burnout, where the staff are overexposed to the suffering of their clients. Now, frontline staff rely on their ability to empathically engage with their clients in order to be effective at their jobs. But too much exposure to the suffering and the pain of their clients, combined with insufficient experiences of joy and pleasure and relaxation in their life, can leave the staff feeling depleted, exhausted and shut down. Sometimes this is referred to as the cost of caring too much, but I don't like this idea as it tends to blame the staff. It can be better described as the cost of having to do too much caring. Compassion fatigue is a protective response that shuts down the staff's em empathy uh, to protect themselves against the amount of suffering and pain they're having to experience. Uh, in the next video, we look at the ways in which we can protect ourselves and our staff from burnout and compassion fatigue. But for now, I want to talk about our third risk factor. We call this vicarious trauma, or sometimes it's also known as secondary trauma. Now, it's often confused for burnout and compassion fatigue, but it has a very different psychological mechanism. Let's start with what trauma is. Trauma can be simply defined as the internalization of a negative self-belief, such as I'm worthless or useless or bad or inadequate. And this usually happens as a result of one or more adverse or threatening events. What it manifests as is unprocessed painful memories of that event that are intrusive and overwhelming for the person. Now, vicarious trauma is trauma that happens because a person is being exposed to the traumas of other people. This can be either through directly witnessing that event or indirectly coming to know about it, usually through exposure to their client's trauma narratives. I describe most vicarious trauma as helper trauma because our staff are often unable to produce the outcomes of the client that they so dearly wish to create. And then the staff can themselves internalize the idea that that is their failure and therefore that they are worthless, they are bad, they are useless, they are inadequate because they couldn't get the outcome for the client that they were after. Now, like trauma, vicarious trauma is usually experienced as the staff member having intrusive and emotionally painful memories. But these memories are about their client's trauma and suffering. And it also leads to them being unable to separate their own sense of self, their own sense of worth from the outcomes they are able to get for their clients. So vicarious trauma produces the same symptoms as post-traumatic stress disorder, which is commonly called PTSD, which includes intrusive memories, constant nervous system arousal, difficulty relaxing and difficulty sleeping. In a following video, I'm going to talk about how we can protect ourselves and respond to vicarious trauma. But first, let's look at how do we know there is a problem with a staff member or maybe a problem with us? So what we're looking for here is any significant change in behaviour, in mood, in concentration, in motivation or attitude that cannot be explained by something going on in their private life. Now, there are four big signs to look out for. 
which can be summarized and memorized as sad, mad, bad, or glad. So sad refers to inappropriately low mood, teariness, lack of pleasure, and lack of motivation. It encompasses the emotion of sadness and despair. Sadness is the feeling we have when our need for connection, love, and support is unmet. And despair is how we feel when we see the future as hopeless or when we feel powerless to achieve what we want. Sad is the most common sign we will see in our staff. The next most common sign is likely to be mad. Now, mad is shorthand for somebody becoming angry, irritable, snappy, or short-tempered. It is the emotion of anger, trying to limit stress by pushing away demands and intrusions or stimulation that are overstressing the person's coping ability. Our third sign, less common, is referred to as bad. Bad refers to someone becoming cynical, careless, indifferent, or in the, in the extreme, corrupt. It is the emotion of disgust, trying to gain psychological distance from the overwhelming demands on the person's empathy. Our final sign, less common of all, is what we call glad. Glad refers to someone appearing to be inappropriately happy, enthusiastic, gleeful, or overly positive. It's a way of denying the stress, vulnerability, and despair they are feeling by faking it. And it often appears very forced and very brutal. So, any of these four signs, if they are unusual, if they are persistent, or if they are exaggerated, indicate that it is time to investigate further and to check in with the person about how they are going and if there is anything they need. Ignoring these signs is a surefire recipe for workplace dysfunction, workplace conflict, staff churn, low engagement, and low productivity. So creating a psychologically safe workplace is really just good sense for everyone. Now, if this has been helpful, click the link below to stay in touch. Please also subscribe, like, or share.